guys, Milkstool here, hope you're well. Today, I would like to do a video about fusions, specifically how I approach fusions. My monthly cycle has just reset and I've just done a couple of fusions. And I thought, hmm, it'd be a good idea to, to do a video on fusions because I haven't done one of those yet. And some of you might find what I do handy and others may say, oh, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're doing. But be that as it may, I thought I'd just put it out there and see what you guys think. So with my fusion strategy, I generally have what I call a macro and a micro strategy. I'm not a big planner, so I'm not going to go really far ahead, get out in a spreadsheet and plan specifically which heroes are nine star, which ones are 10 stars and what food it'll take to get there. Generally, what I do is, like I said, two pronged approach, macro and micro strategy. In the macro, I basically go into my bag and my hero stack to see how many potential heroes I can either nine star or 10 star, depending on the number of copies I have. And so what you're looking out for here is guys, obviously you need three copies of a particular hero to nine star it, and then five copies if you want it to get it to 10 star. And along the way, you obviously need a couple of six stars as well. But generally at the macro level, at the very high level, I have some resemblance of a strategy in terms of, yes, I have three copies here. I have copy, five copies there. I'm going to make this, or I'm going to focus my efforts on this individual hero to get them to either nine or 10 stars. So here, if I look at my bag and just my bag, in particular Fortress, I can see that Emily is probably the one that I'll get to 10 star. It's or, or actually, yes, I have three copies there. So I have enough. It's seven stars right now. I need one copy to get her to, I think, a nine star. And then two more copies to get her to 10 star. So that's at a macro level. I would look at my hero stack and then I would look at my bag to see if I have five copies of or three copies of a particular whole particular hero in the bag. So Horus, I could probably, given I've already built one, get one to the nine star. Uh, assuming that obviously if I don't want to use the two extra copies to get him to E5, which I probably don't. I have Jar, who's fallen out of the meta. And I have King Barton, or who I affectionately like to call King Buttons. So King Buttons is out of the meta right now and I have way too many copies there. And so that's obviously a potential in Abyss. Uh, in terms of progressing any hero to, to 10 star. So that's the, the, the macro strategy. Then we get to the micro. And the micro really only applies when you start getting into the specific fusions themselves. And so the only thing that I keep in mind here when I do fusions in terms of micro is there are, there are two kinds of heroes. There are what I call natural five stars, unnatural five stars, and within the unnatural five star segment, it breaks down into what I'm gonna call promotable unnatural five stars and just food unnatural five stars. So what do I mean by natural five star, unnatural five star? For the new players out there, a natural five star is a five star hero that you cannot create from four star shots. So I'm talking about Valks. Valks, you cannot create from four star shots. Oberon, you cannot create from four star shots. Whereas player like, like a hero like Zekis or who I affectionately known as a Admiral Akbar. Admiral Akbar, you can actually create him from a whole bunch of four star shards. And so he is what I call an unnatural five star hero. But more than that, and this leads to my second point, Admiral Akbar is actually a promotable unnatural hero. So if you can see up here, if I get enough copies of Admiral Akbar, I can actually get him to six star and nine star. And with the unnatural heroes, there's a natural ceiling on how high you can promote them. And that is nine stars. And so that's just something else to keep in mind when you're fusing in terms of the micro. There are unnatural heroes and within unnatural heroes, there are what I call ones that you can promote, promotable unnatural heroes. And then there are heroes like this lady with a cat whose name I don't know. I think it's Walker, Windwalker. So if you look up here, guys, she can't be promoted beyond five star. 
meaning she's just food. She's five star food for everyone else. So when you're fusing at the microwave level, why is it important to remember or distinguish between promotable unnatural heroes and food unnatural heroes? It's important to keep those two things in mind because when you're fusing, look, looking for, I guess, extra bits to, to, to get a five star up and fused, you generally don't want to sacrifice things that you can make or, or copies that you can make into a promotable five star hero uh, or unnatural hero. Otherwise, you, you just end up shooting yourself in, in the foot. Generally, when you're looking for fodder to create the five star heroes, you use the food equivalent of the unnatural heroes. So if there aren't any extra copies of that hero lying around. So for example, tree person here, if I had three copies of tree man and elder, and I had another four or five copies of ant elder, I would use up all the ant elder copies before I even considered using, say for example, another food source, another unnatural four star that it can become five star food. Because chances are you won't be able to get uh, natural copies of five star heroes quickly. Uh, so natural five star heroes include, which people use for food, include faceless. They're not that easy to come by, nor is Gru. So faced with that, you then, your, your only other options then are really to focus on creating what I call the promotable unnatural heroes. The, the Zekis or Admiral Akbars and Dog Boy here <laughs> are the ones that if you can avoid using them as food, you can actually use them to create nine star food for heroes that you eventually 10 star or use it for fodder to get to E1, E2, etc. So that's the micro that you have to keep in mind when you're fusing. But having said all that, even if you do the macro and the micro, there will be times where you just lose track and, and you, you sacrifice something that you didn't intend to sacrifice. And that's okay. And that, I say that that's okay because guys in the orbing area or the profit tree area, you can actually replace heroes. And this is where I fundamentally disagree with, I guess, some of the other players out there that basically use the branches uh, in the profit tree to basically look for copies of top tier heroes. I think that's a very bad use of branches. <laughs> and I know that's a probably a very controversial thing to say and that'll divide us but and so if you disagree just comment down below and tell me why you disagree i use these branches basically for fusion reasons so if i've fused enough five star heroes to get to nine star or eight star or i'm stuck in creating a six star to get to a nine star or a ten star i'll generally use my branches to find that lost hero uh, that I need to, to, to progress. And if along the way I'm replacing and a top tier hero comes, that's a bonus, right? So I don't waste my branches just looking for top tier heroes. I think that's, you're using branches without any real purpose there. I think you should, in my opinion, be using the branches for creating heroes, well, fusing heroes that you need to progress uh, to nine star or 10 star for food. So then you can progress some of the top tier heroes that you're concentrating on to get them to the necessary E1, E2, E5 levels that you need in the game. And so guys, that's my fusion strategy. That is also my outlook on how you should use branches. If you found this video useful, please leave a thumbs up or subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.